friends uh, i welcome you all to our today's session uh we are going to learn the subject tax in this particular course some of you might have some idea about what kind of taxes and we are having in our country right so you might be able to tell me also name of the some popular taxes can you tell me some example of sub taxes for example let me give an example income tax that is one thing you know have you heard of any other type of tax goods and sales tax goods and services tax okay then sales tax sales tax was there once upon a time okay now you can say okay, some other tax excise duty excise duty excise duty to some extent it is still there so like this there are various taxes uh we have heard of various types of taxes okay today or in this course we will be focusing mostly on income tax and when i say income tax we will be learning income tax law right income tax law means definitely we have to learn a particular act for any same law and the relevant act here is the income tax act 1961 that is what we are going to learn i am going to share the screen with you right now uh first i will expect all of you to uh, write down a sentence or focus on this sentence which i am showing you so i call this particular sentence as a scheme of taxation because this explains me or this this will be explaining us how tax is levied in our country or how income tax is levied okay so if you read it says every person whose total income of the previous year exceeds the maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax is an assessee and chargeable to income tax at the rate or rates prescribed in the finance act for the relevant assessment year full stop are you able to see it yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay can you read it right now will you please read it some yes, of you please please, please read, it, read it loudly scheme of taxation uh, every person whose total income of the previous year exceed the maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax in an asset uh, assc is an assc assc and chargeable to income tax at the rate or rates prescribed in the finance act for the relevant assessment year okay so you have read this sentence you might be finding it little difficult to get the complete meaning of this sentence is it not are you finding it are you facing any difficulty in understanding this yes sir okay some of you may say yes some of you may say no but to understand it technically we need to understand first of all certain terms which are highlighted or which are there in the red colored font in that sentence for example if i want to get the complete meaning or the true meaning of this particular uh, sentence i need to understand first of all what is the meaning of this person the sentence is every person whose total income of the previous year exceeds the maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax is an assc and chargeable to income tax at the rate or rates prescribed in the finance act for the relevant assessment year so i need to understand what is the meaning of this person what is the meaning of total income what is this previous year and what is the maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax who is an assc how tax will be chargeable what are these rates and rate your rate and rates and what is this finance act and what is this assessment if i know the legal meaning the technical meaning of this particular terms then only i'll be able to understand this sentence completely are you agreeing with me yes sir okay yes, sir. so so that is why this but those particular words are highlighted first if you remember i am saying every person first we need to understand who are these persons if somebody say he is not a person then he is out of the scheme is it not because it says every person then it says whose total income 
So first of all, I need to understand what is the meaning of this term person. Once I know someone is a person or some entity is a person, the next thing is that we'll try to know what is his total income. Because as you know, what you have seen here, every person whose total income. So we need to compute total income. The term total income is important for us. Yes or no? Right, every person whose total income of the previous year. I am not saying total income of your entire life. Here I am saying total income of the previous year. So it is important for us to know what is this previous year. And that is taxable only if it exceeds the maximum amount which is not chargeable to tax. That means there is amount. If your total income is up to that, it is not chargeable to tax. Only when it exceeds that limit, it will be chargeable to tax. Are you getting me? So I need to know what is the maximum amount which is not chargeable to tax. Right? So every person whose total income of the previous year exceeds the maximum amount not chargeable to tax, we will be calling that person under income tax law as an assessee. Right? We will be calling him as assessee. And once he is an assessee, he is chargeable to income tax. Now we will be seeing what are the charging sections. So we need to know what are the charging sections, how income tax will be chargeable. I need to know the, those charging sections. Okay. It is chargeable to income tax at the rate or rates. Rate means a single rate. For some persons, for some assessors, there might be a single rate. Okay. Okay. But some assessors, there might be multiple rates. That means up to certain income, there is a rate. Beyond that, there is a different rate. Beyond that, some other rates might be there. We call it as a slab rate. Are you getting? So I need to know what are these rate and rates. And friends, these rate and rates, incidentally, are not prescribed in the income tax. It is prescribed where? It is prescribed in the finance. So you know, every year we get a finance. The last finance act was Finance Act 2021. Now, Finance Act 2022 is expected. It will come in the form of finance bill, which is popularly known as uh, our budget. After that, it will become Finance Act. Is it now? So, these rates will be there where? In the finance. Okay. But which finance? Finance Act for the relevant assessment year. So I need to know what is this relevant assessment here. I need to understand what is assessment here. Okay, so many finance acts are there and every act there may be different rates. But I need to know the rate which is there in, the, in my relevant assessment here. Okay, understood the basic concept. Now let us try to understand that sentence once again. Okay, let us try to recall what I had told you earlier. Every person, right now, I don't know who are these persons. So I need to understand. Then only I'll be able to get the complete meaning of that sentence. Every person whose total income, total income is important. Okay, every person whose total income of the previous year exceeds the maximum amount which is not chargeable to tax chargeable to income tax is an assessee and chargeable to income tax at the rate or rates prescribed in the finance act for the relevant assessment year. Okay, for the relevant assessment year. So I need to 
understand what is the meaning of person, what is the meaning of total income, what is previous year, what is the maximum amount which is not eligible to tax, who are these assesses, what are various charging sections, and what are these rates, rate and rates which are prescribed in the finance act of the relevant assessment year. If I know the meaning of all these terms, then only I will be able to understand the scheme of tax. Okay, you can say that is the prerequisite, that the essence of, of understanding income tax law. <clears throat> okay, is it clear to you? Now, let me once again share the screen with you. Now we'll analyze all these things in detail. Now, how to understand these terms? You can once again have a look at this term. These terms are defined in the Income Tax Act. So we need to refer to the Income Tax Act. First of all, if I want to know the what is the meaning of person, I have to refer to the Income Tax Act. Then let us learn what is the meaning of total income, what is previous year, what is maximum amount, which is not chargeable to tax, like this. We will be learning all these terms. Okay, now what we will do? Let me familiarize you with the income tax department. Okay, and in the department website, you can find out the law. Okay, so, so as some people say or popularly disbelieve that a good lawyer can manage without knowing law, provided he knows where the law is. That means if you do not know what is law, it's okay, but you should know where the law is so that you can find it out. Okay, that is more important for us. So let us see the source, where the law is located, where we can say the update, where you can find out the updated law. Of course, you can refer to some textbooks, but let me take you to the income tax department's website right now. Give me a second. Going to share the screen with you. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, no, you are not able to see it now. Just a minute. Once again, I'm trying to share the screen with you. Yeah. Are you seeing this Chrome browser? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, one second. You are not seeing it right now? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay, now you will able to see it. Yeah, yes. you're able to see it now. Right. So I told you we'll visit to the income tax department's website. You see, this is the website address www.income tax India dot gov dot in okay so you see this is the home page of income tax department are you able to see it yes sir okay so there are many things which are important for us yes sir we need to be very familiar with this website so we'll be learning so many things from this site itself okay you see you can have a look at the home page. Okay. Now, if you see here, under this heading, tax laws and rules, you see so many links are there. Are you able to see? Are you able to read where I'm putting the cursor? 
Yes, sir. What is written here? Yes, yes sir. Tax rules and tax laws and tax laws and rules. And inside that, you see, acts are there, rules are there, circulars, notifications, all these are there. Okay. So I want to show you the income tax act. Then where should I go? Where should I click? Tax. Okay. If I click acts, you can find a list of acts. Now I click here. You see, so many related acts are there. You see, Income Tax Act 1961, which is appearing at the top. We'll click here. Let us see how Income Tax Act looks like. If I click here, now you can see this page has come where you see section wise it is appearing section 1, section 2, section 3, section 4. These are various sections of Income Tax. Okay. And just like many laws, Income Tax Act also has got certain chapters. So here is the option. You can look at the act section wise or you see chapter wise. Are you able to see it? Yes, sir. So yes. if I click click here, okay, I can see chapter wise. You see this act is divided into various chapters. You see chapter one, preliminary. Chapter two, basis of charge. Chapter three, income which do not form part of total income. Chapter four, chapter four is computation of total income. Like this. It is divided into, you see, various chapters. Okay. Suppose you want to know deductions. Which chapter you should refer? Suppose you do not know a section. So which chapter you should go? Let us say you want to know deduction from your total income. You know, income tax law allows certain deductions. So that will be deducted from your total income. Your total income will be less. Consequently, tax will be less. Let us say you want, want to understand the deductions. Can you tell me which chapter you should visit? Six, sir. Six, sir. Six. Right. So chapter six A is the relevant. So if you click here, you can find out list of deductions. Okay. You see, ATA, ATAA, ATAC, so many deductions are there. Where very popular thing is that ATC, deductions for life insurance, premia, all these things. Right. Are you getting it? So you see, this is how you can search a section or if you go to section wise you can say section wise also it is up there if you know in the particular section you can find it okay so there you can go to the second page so many pages are there this is how you can readily use the income tax app. if you are having a mobile phone phone income tax act is always there in your pocket okay and if you are looking for a particular section, you can directly search here. If you, are, if you know what is the section, if you know the section number, you can directly search. So for example, if you want to know what is ATC, you want to learn the deduction. So just you see, I'm clicking here, ATC, right? Are you seeing it? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay. ATC, enter. Now you see, ATC is appearing here. You can click here, you can read the IT section. So these are the things you see if you invest, make investment in these areas, like if you pay, let us say, in uh, life insurance premium, if you contribute to provident fund, you'll be getting some deduction. So without asking anyone, you can directly refer to the section and you can get the answer. So this is IT section. Okay, are you feeling comfortable now? So act is always there in your pocket. Yes. Okay, now, when you know this is the act, but the real problem here is that you might have read many acts. The problem in reading with the act is that if you see here, you see there are chapters. Chapters are divided into various sections. Is it not? And each section might be having what? Many subsections. Right? And subsection might be divided into areas. What next? Clauses. Right? Clauses might having subclause. Subclause might be having provisos. Is it not? So because of this thing, because of 
section, subsection, clause, subclause, proviso. What actually happens if you try to read a particular provision, you will find the sentences are extremely long. Is it not? You may get a comma after a page. Full stop, you may find it very difficult to get because sentence is continuing. Is it not? So that is the problem in reading law. So therefore, what happens? Our authors, book writers, what they do? They, in fact, copy those provisions of the law, paste it somewhere else. And they all that they do, they make these big sentences or large sentences into small sentences so that one can easily understand. Okay, that you, if you try, you can also do. Because law is not literature. You cannot write something out of your mind. What is there, it is already provided. Okay, so if you want, you can simply copy those related sections, paste it in a word file and get it edited. Your book is ready or your notes are ready. That's all you have to do. And if you try, in six months, you will be able to write a book on it. 100%. That will be a good book because that will be in your own language. Very easy to do it. I have already shown you the source. Okay, all that you have to do, relevant sections, copy it, paste it, get it edited. Book is ready. Your own book is ready. Okay, understood how simple it is. Okay, now friends, now we have seen how Income Tax Act looks like. Let me take you to the first chapter. Let us see first section, section wise, we'll be covering these things. Yeah, you are able to see it. Should I take you to the section one? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so let us look at section one. You can find out. You see, this is how Income Tax Act looks like. You see, this is the name of the act. Okay, this is Act number 43 of 1961. Okay, this is the latest act as amended by Finance Act 2021. All the amended provisions are here. This is, as you know, called as the preamble of the act. Okay, an act to consolidate and amend the law relating to income tax and super tax. Okay, so this is how this is this is how the chapters are uh, arranged. You see, first we are looking at the chapter one, and this chapter one. What is the title of this chapter? Preliminary. Preliminary. So we are now looking at the chapter one, section one, like many other acts also. Here you see section one are having section one is having three subsections. Okay, and they talk about short title, extent, and comments. Right? And what is the short title? Section one one. If you read this act, may be called as Income Tax Act 1961. This gives us a title. So hereafter, whenever we will be referring to this act, we will be calling it as Income Tax Act 1961, because that is the complete name of the act. Okay. The section one, two talks about extent. It says it extends to whole of India. Okay. Whole of India means there is no exclusion. No exclusion to Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh, Goa, Daman, Dewan. Okay. Or any union territory, nothing. It is extends to whole of India. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The third provision talks that it shall come into force on first day of April 1962. So, what is the effective date? First April 1962. What is the name of the act? Income Tax Act 1962. And it applies to whole of India. It extends to follow up. Okay, section one is over. Okay, section one we have remembered thoroughly. Now, after coming section one, we will be moving to which section? What is the next section? Section, section two. two. Very good. So, section two, as you know, in the most of the act, section two deals with 
definitions. And now we are more interested in that sense. Why we are more interested? Because we do not know the meaning of all these terms. I don't know who is a person. I don't know what is total income. I don't know what is assessment year, what is previous year. I don't know all these things. So when I do not know the meaning of a particular term, what should I do? Where should I look into? Which section? Definition. Two definitions. Section two. First, I'll refer to section two. If it is defined, then fine. Let us say it is not defined. Then what, what can I do? There is no guarantee that so, each and every term would have been defined. If it is if it is not defined, what should I do? Yes, you please tell me. Uh, so we can look uh, in the interpretation clause that is in the section three, or we can yeah. look at the general, general clauses at or other related. Yeah, we, we can refer to some related acts or maybe general clauses act with some other law. It is defined. If it is not defined there also. If the term is not defined in any act, then what should I do? Then, sir, it can be presumed as per the dictionary meaning. Fantastic. Then, no other way. Then, you have to go by the common meaning, refer to a dictionary. Is it not? So, that is the normal. But here, most of the terms you will find, the terms that we will be learning, are defined in the income tax. Okay. So, to understand this thing, let me take you to section 2. And as you know, section two, you'll find the terms they are explained or they are defined in an alphabetical order. Is it not? So let us see section two. Let us see how it looks like. Section one, we have finished. Now let us do Section 2, I am going to visit now. Let us say section 2. Now, are you able to see section 2 now? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you see. Okay. You see, terms are arranged in alphabetical order. First, you see advanced tax. You might be thinking income tax is yet to be defined. How come this advanced tax is not? Then agricultural income. It is so because they're arranged in an alphabetical order. So first A will come, then B will come like this. You see A is going on. After that, A is still going on. You see B has started from B. Okay, block of asset, board. Then C, capital asset. Okay, company. D, like this. But I am interested uh, uh, in between here. One thing is that. Okay, after D, okay, P, uh, P has gone. I am interested to know the term person. Okay, so first, I, uh, we, uh, we are interested to know the term person. Can you see the definition of person here? Yes, yes sir. Okay, which yes, class? Sir. Which class? 31. 31. So, so section 2 clause 31 talks about persons. Okay, just have a look. You see person includes so many things. We'll be discussing all those. Okay, so like this, we can find out the meaning of a particular term. Right? Section 2 will be talking about definitions. Now, the related terms will be understanding. Now, once again, I am sharing the PPT with you. This is what I had shown you earlier. Right? And here, some other points you have to keep in mind. Now, you have remembered that every person whose total income of the previous year exceeds the maximum amount, which is not chargeable to income tax, is an RCC and chargeable to income tax at the rate or rates prescribed in the Finance Act for the relevant assessment year. Now, we have to keep in mind some more things. The person's meaning, we will find it out. We'll see what is that thing. But we need to also know that the total income is chargeable to tax. But total income shall be determined on the basis of residential tax status. That means 
if residential status of two persons are different, then even if they're having similar kind of source of income, that total income may be different. So total income has to be computed on the basis of residential status in India. Okay. The income which will be aggregated to arrive at the total income of a resident may be different from a non-resident or from a person who is a resident but not ordinary resident. So therefore, to understand total income, I also need to understand the concept of residential status. Okay, under income tax law, it has been classified that who are residents, who are non-resident, who are residents but not ordinary resident. On that basis, total income will be computed. Okay, persons I can find definition. Total income also we will be able to find it out. What is the meaning? But total income, when you'll be learning, you have to also keep in mind the residential status of the person. Okay, now few other things also we have to keep in mind. So total income is subject to that. Then friends, I told you this income tax rates or the rate or rates are prescribed in the finance act. That's what I told you now. Yes or no? But there are some rates, you can call them as the special rates, which are also prescribed in the Income Tax Act. But normally these slab rates, the general rates are prescribed in the Finance Act, but some specific rates. For example, rate is 30% for tax on lotteries. For lottery income, tax rate is flat 30%. Or from long-term capital gain, tax rate is 20%. Okay, or some anonymous donations, tax rate is again 30 percent like this there are some special rates which are prescribed in the income tax act also so therefore when i have between it is prescribed in the finance act there is an asterisk mark there are some rates which are prescribed in the income tax act also this also you have to keep in mind okay right one more thing i told you if the person's total income exceeds the maximum amount which is are not chargeable to income tax, we can call that person as an assist. Okay, but there may be other categories of assist or other types of assist. But what is the exact meaning of assist? We'll be learning, and it is defined in section 2, clause 7. Okay, on section 2, clause 7, we'll be seeing exactly what is the meaning of assist. Okay, friends. Yes, sir. Yes, no. sir. Right. So these three things we have to keep in the mind. We have to remember this sentence to understand the skill. But when coming to total income, we have to keep in the mind that we need to compute it on the basis of residential status. And the meaning of assist we will be learning in section 2, class 7. And there are some rates which are prescribed in the Income Tax Act also. Right. Now, friends, let us... Try to understand what is the meaning of person. You have already seen in the act itself. Now, if you look at that definition, you see this is what section 2, clause 31 says. It is an inclusive definition. You might be knowing when we are learning a definition, some of the definitions might be inclusive definitions. You are aware of it or not? Some definitions might be exhaustive. Some definitions might be inclusive, come exhaustive. Okay, as a student of law, so we have to keep that thing in mind. Either it is an inclusive definition or exhaustive definition or inclusive, come exhaustive definition. Because as you have seen, the law here says that person includes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that means this is an inclusive definition. Purpose police law has not exhaustively defined. But there, if you write person means so and so, that means law has given an in inclusive definition, but you are giving an exhaustive definition, which is totally incorrect. Is it not? That means your definition is entirely wrong, even if you have written everything correctly, but instead of 
using the word includes, you have used the word meets. The examiner may not read your answer once he knows that your definition is wrong. Are you getting me? Yes. Sir. So when you are reading the provisions, so pay attention to this aspect. That what kind of definition it is. Okay. Now if you look at this definition, it says that person includes one individual, two HUF, three a farm, which includes limited liability partnerships, four AOP, that is association of persons, or BOI, that is body of individuals, five company, six local authority, and seven AJP, artificial juridical person. Okay, how many category of persons are there? Sir, uh, seven categories. Seven category of persons. Okay, let us try to recall one individual, right? Second, HUF. Third, farm, um, which includes LLP, right? Fourth, company. Okay, fifth, AOP, BOI. Sixth, local authority. Seven artificial juridical person. These are the seven category person. Right? Okay. Yes, sir. So all of them are liable to pay tax. And this is an inclusive difference. So there might be some other types of person which are, who are not specifically included in this list. Because the definition is inclusive. Definition. Okay, so you cannot say I am not a person just because somebody is not an individual, not an HUF, not a farm, not a company, not a OPPI, not a local authority, or not a AJP. Still, he can be a person because the definition is inclusive. Okay. Nowhere law has said that person means this thing. Did you understand this? Therefore, purposefully, this definition is made inclusive. You are getting me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, What is the meaning of all these things? Who are individuals, HGA, farm, etc.? One by one, let us slot. First of all, let us see who are individuals. You already know seven category of persons are there. Who is an individual is not defined in income tax. So you have to go by natural meaning. So natural persons, human beings, including minor, or a person of one's of mind, all of them are individuals. So all of us, you, me, all of us are individuals. And if someone is an individual, he is chargeable to income tax when the total income exceeds the basic exemption. Some of you might be knowing what is the basic exemption. Limit. Do you have any idea? Basic exemption limit under income tax law. That means if you, as an individual, if your income is up to that, no tax will be levied. The five lakhs. So, any other, any different answer? So, most of us think that it is five lakh. We'll be learning that it's not five lakh. It's two point five, two lakh fifty thousand. That's the basic exemption. Okay. After that, slab rate starts. If you earn up to two lakh fifty thousand, then there will be no tax. That's the basic exemption limit. But after that, 2 lakh 50,000 to 5 lakh rupees for an individual rate of tax is 5% of total income. And 5 lakh to up to 10 lakh rate of tax is 20%. And beyond 10 lakh rate of tax is 30% normally. 
But there is one more scheme, optional scheme, where rates are different up to 2.5 lakh nil. Okay, and then for every increase in 2.5 lakh, rate of tax will increase by 5%. We will be learning all these tax rates. That means tax rate might be 5%, 10%, 15%. 20%, 25%, and last one is 30%. Different kind of tax rates are there. So there are options. You may go for scheme one or go for scheme two. The first scheme I told you that is referred to as the old scheme. And this thing 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, 30%. This is called as the new scheme. We'll be learning all that, but right now, don't worry about this thing. But what is the basic exemption limit? 2 lakh 3,000 rupees. Okay, right now, friends. In case of a death of an individual, his legal representative is liable to pay tax, he is chargeable to tax. If individual is a minor or a person of unsound mind, his guardian is responsible to pay tax. Here I'm talking about income tax. Okay, this is how we'll understand the term individual. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Now, please. next type of person is HUF. You might be knowing Hindu undivided family. This is one more category of person. This is also not defined under income tax. This is an entity which is governed by Hindu law. And an HUF may become assessee only when it has some income yielding joint property. If there is some joint property in the name of HUF where some income is derived, then only HUF can become an assessee. <coughs> okay. HUF consists of all persons who are linearly descended from a common ancestor. Okay. That means, let us say, there is a grandfather, his son. That means grandfather, father, son like this, who are linearly descended. Includes their wives and unmarried daughters. It also includes a stranger who is legally adopted. So a chief can have an adopted member also. If a child is conceived, then he is not treated as a member of, uh, of a chief for income tax purpose. But he may be treated as a member for inheritance or partition, etc. But an income tax law, the conceived child is not a member of a chief until the child is born. And one HUF may have smaller HUFs inside it. HUF may contain smaller HUF that may be assessed separately. You see, HUF is a person and each member of HUF are individuals. They may be a person. So, HUF might be having some income. Each member might be having some income. And one HUF may have, be having smaller HUF inside. Okay. But HUF means it has to be more than one person. A single member cannot constitute an HUF. Okay. Even though Jain and Sikh families are not governed by Hindu law, they are still treated as HUF. Is it clear to you? HUF means there might be some joint property where from some income is generated, that HUF may be treated as a separate person, as a separate process. Okay, suppose there is a HUF, there are members. Each member might be having their own income. Suppose a member is having salary. That is, salary is his income as an individual capacity. He has to file income tax return as an individual. But let us say HUF is earning rent from a joint property. That is HUF's income. So HUF's income is different, individual's income is different. And one large HUF, large family might be having smaller families inside them. Okay, under income tax law, income HUF is a separate asset, a separate person. 
Is it okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Good. Now, friends, we have understood uh, this thing, individual HUF. Now, if you want to learn a little more regarding HUF, there are school, there are two schools of Hindu law. And in our country, there are two types of HUF. One is referred to as Dayavaga School of HUF. Another is the Daksha School of HUF. Dayavaga School of HUF, mostly it is found in the state of West Bengal and Assam. And Mithakshara School type of HUF is there all over India except West Bengal and Assam. If you want to know the difference between them, just have a look at this table about their applicability. Dayavanga is, a, is found in West Bengal and Assam, Mithakshara in the rest of India. Then under Dayavaga school or Dayavaga type of HUF, nobody acquires the right in the share of the property by birth as long as the head of the family is leaving. Okay. Nobody acquires the right so long as the head of the family is alive. But under Mithakhira school, which is prevalent in the rest of India, one acquires the right of the family property by his birth and not by successor irrespective of the fact that his elders are leaving. Okay, if you refer to the Ayavaga school, the children do not acquire any right share in the family property as long as their father is alive. And only on death of the father, the children will acquire the right or share in the property. Hence, the father and his brothers would be co-personers. Co-personers means members members of the age. But on Mithakhyara, every child born in the family acquires a right or share in the family. Okay, so this is the basic difference between two types of age. <coughs> but whatever might be the type, under income tax law, they have separate assesses and they might be having separate income. Okay, friends. Is it clear up to this? Yes. Are you, are you okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Do you need a break or should we continue? Sir, so five minutes. Please. Okay, we'll take a break for five minutes. Uh, yes, friends. Welcome back. So, so far, what we have understood that uh, every person whose total income of the previous year exceeds the maximum amount, which is not chargeable to income tax, is an assessee. If he is an assessee, then he is chargeable to income tax. And how he'll be charged, how income tax will be charged at the rate or rates which are prescribed generally in the finance act. But you know, there are some rates which are prescribed in the income tax act also. Okay, and we need to refer to the Finance Act for the relevant assessment here. We also need to know what is the meaning of this assessment. And one more thing, when tax is levied on the total income, this total income computation depends on a person's residential status. So residential status is also important to arrive at the total income. Okay, now having understood that, then when we have seen that every person is liable to tax, liable to pay tax, in that condition, right? If total income exceeds. Now, who are these persons? We have seen seven categories of persons. Okay. If you recall, they are individual, HUF, farm, which includes LLP, then companies, then AOP BOI, then local authority, and artificial judicial person. These are various kinds of persons. Now, one by one, we are discussing. And we have already completed individual category. We know who are individuals. Even if it is not defined, we know what is the meaning of individual. We have also understood what is the meaning of Hindu undivided family. Now, next category of persons will be learning now. Let me share the screen with you. It is far. Far means partnership. It may be registered, may not be registered, doesn't matter. 
as you know under partnership law there is no uh, uh, mandatory requirement that uh, this has to be registered farm has to be registered and partnership farm is a separate taxable person apart from its partners partners are different and partnership farm is different under income tax law mm -hmm. so partner might be having his separate income farm is having a different kind of income. okay what is a farm it is defined in the partnership act 1932 and what is llp as defined under LLP Act 2008. But under income tax law, LLPs are included under farm, included in, in, in farm. That means farm and LLP, they're same under income tax law. They're one category. Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. So under income tax law, farm includes limited liability partnership. Okay, but normally, if you know, as all of, most of you might be knowing, that LLP is a separate legal entity, has a perpetual successor and a limited liability, just like a company. Okay, it has both the benefits of a farm as well as a company. Income tax treats this type of entities as a normal partnership farm. Income is taxed in the hands of the farm, not in the hands of partners, because LLP is different from partners. LLP is a different assessee and partners are different assessees. So under income tax law, farms, LLPs and partners, they're different. Okay. The next category of person is AOP or BOI. AOP and BOI. They are two different category of persons. First, let us try to understand in a very simple way. What is this association of person and body of people? We have seen seven category of persons. When you say association of persons, that means two persons are joining together. Okay. Suppose you see, suppose I am one person and one of you, any one of you, are coming together to do a project. Okay. And we are not forming any partnership. We are not doing any partnership. It's only for a project. Let us say we are doing something like a joint venture. Okay, to do a particular thing. You and me will be constructing a flyover. Once the flyover is constructed, we are separate. So it is only a joint venture. You are an individual, I am also an individual. That entity we are forming, or the entity through which we are doing this business, is called as body of individuals. Because both the members are individuals. Right? But let us say I am an individual, but I am joining with a company. Okay, so one member is a company, another member is an individual. But company is a person, individual is also a person. So a company and individual joining together and entering into a joint venture agreement. Can we call it as the body of individual? Both the members are not individuals. One of them is an individual, another is a company, but company is a person. So we can refer to those types of entities as AOP, Association of Persons. Because members are persons, but members are not individuals. Okay, this is the simple meaning of a simple difference between AOP and BOP. But there are other points of differences. We'll be looking into that. Okay, but at this level, is it clear to you? Now you can very easily identify what is a BOI, what is an AOP. It's a simple thing. But other differences, if you look at, let me share the screen with you now. You see, this table shows the difference between AOP and BOI. First difference, if you see AOP, meaning a group of persons who join together for common object. That means the intention is common. What is BOI? Group of individuals who join together for certain activity. Objective may not be common, but in a common activities, they are involved. 
Are you getting it? Yes. In one activity, they're in God, but objectives are not God. So let me give an example. For example, you see, both you and me are involved in one activity right now. But whether our objectives are common, my objective or my object is to teach you. Your objective is to learn. But activity is one. Both of us are now in one activity. Are you getting? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when you talk about body of uh, body of individuals, so it's a group of individuals who join together for certain common activity, but their objective may not be same. Coming to membership part, under AOP, member can be any person. That means even a company, farm, HUF, individual, anybody can be a member. But body of individual, membership means only individuals. Okay. The coming to object part, object part, more or less we have discussed just now. AOP has some common object, UI may not be having common object. Now, one more important difference is that, which is about the creation of these two types of entities. AOP is a voluntary association. That means since the object is common, people voluntarily come together and form that association. Body of individuals may not be voluntary. It's not voluntarily created, but still it's a body. Did you understand or do you need me to explain this? Understood. Understood? Got it, sir. Yes. Got it. So, AOP is what? Voluntary. BOI, body of individual, may not be voluntary. For example, let us say court passes an order that Mr. A and Mr. B will jointly pay a compensation to somebody. Or a particular case, court passes an order that, let us say, something like this. Uh, courier agency and transporter, both of them will jointly compensate somebody. That's this kind of order is passed. Whether those two people are voluntarily coming together? No. A third person, that's a court, is combining them. Okay. So jointly what they are, whatever they are doing, so that is, or you can say, they are met together by a third person. Voluntarily they are not coming together. That possibility is as they are with BOI. So BOI may not be voluntary. May not be voluntarily formed. Are you getting? So you have understood the meaning of individual, HUF, PAR, AOP, and BOI. Is it clear after this? Okay. Now, yes. next type of person speaks. Next type of person is company. Okay. Have you heard of the word company? Most of you must have heard it. Can you define a company? Have you studied company law? Okay, Company Act 2013, you must have studied. Right. Sir, uh, yes, sir. company is considered as an artificial person and it has uh, uh, own uh, uh, transactions and own um, list of uh, funds, uh, shares and uh, uh, public listed companies are there, private limited companies are there. Right, right. Very good. You are explaining me the meaning of the company. Uh, it is its own legal entity, sir. Legal identity. Okay, separate legal identity. Oh, you are talking about the characteristics of the company, meaning of the company, but exactly I want the legal definition. Can anyone define it? Uh, 
so a company is a legal entity where like group of persons are associated and they represent the company uh like for the goods and or uh, for selling the goods and services okay you are trying to explain me the meaning uh so when a group of people the come together and want to achieve a co common goal and a common objective uh that's known as company so okay again you are trying to explain me the meaning i want the definition i think definition you have not read but don't worry so let me share with you. similarly the way i yeah the way i showed you uh, to visit to the income tax department's website and you can see the law okay it is very convenient now you can immediately see the law you can see the definition similarly you can go to the definition of ministry of corporate affairs mca mca.gov.on dot in download the companies act and again read the definition of company will you do it today yes sir okay so yes. make yourself familiar with that also guys one is income tax department website another is the ministry of corporate affairs mca okay companies act entire act can be downloaded or there is a e book which you can also refer that will help you to understand very provisions of a company law now let me show you the definition of the company because many times when this question is asked students commit a mistake they write this companies act 2030 section 2 clause 20 defines the meaning of company can you read it some of you please read it loudly company means a company incorporated under this act or under any previous company law that's it Now tell me, it is an inclusive definition or exhaustive definition? It's an exhaustive definition. Exhaustive definition. It clearly says "company" means this. A company is incorporated under this act. That means under Companies Act 2013 or any previous company law. Maybe Companies Act 1956. Maybe earlier Companies Act. Whatever may be, company which is incorporated under this act or Any previous company law is a company. That's it. Understood the meaning of company? Existing business. Okay. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But friends, unfortunately, if you write this definition in income tax, then you are not going to get any mark. Will not get anything because the debt. This is the definition which is provided under Companies Act 2013. Under Income Tax Act, this definition also you can find in Section 2, Clause 70. Okay, if you refer here Section 2, Clause 70, I had already shown you how to refer that. If you read that Act, it says, "Come to mean a Indian company, b." body corporate incorporated by or under any law outside india an institution association a body assessed as a company on or before 14970 the institution association or body declared by central board of direct taxes as a company so this is the meaning of company under income tax law so now we can understand that there are differences between definition under companies act and definition under income tax act 1961 Okay, Indian company body incorporated by under any law outside India. That is also a company under income tax law. But under Companies Act, that is not a company because Companies Act says we are incorporated under this act or under any previous law. Under income tax law, under institution association body assessed as a company on or before one four seventy. That is also a company. If one particular body was assessed. On or before one point seventy as a company that will continue to be assessed as a company. Okay, and what is the point number four? Can you read it? Institution association body declared by CBDT as a company. Okay, if CBDT declares a particular institution association or body as a company, that is also. Good. Okay, if CBDT declares that this university is a company, that's a company. 
if that institution is a company that's a company okay central board of direct tax has been declared a particular as institution association or body as a company Civility cannot declare you as a company because you are not an institution association or body you are an individual Civility cannot declare you as a company but civility can declare an institution association or body as a and once declared that will be continued as a company till that sir, is withdrawn. Uh, yeah. Sir, excuse me, one doctor. Yes. Sir, uh, one person company will be called as the same or the individual term will be declared? Yes, that is also common. Under income tax law, OPCs are also common. Okay, OPCs are company under both the acts, under Companies Act as well as under income tax. Under Companies Act, you have seen the definition of company. Right? That is the meaning of company. Now, Companies Act also defines various types of company. Any idea how many types of companies are there? Under Companies Act. So, on the basis of liability, there is limited liability company, unlimited liability, one person company is there. Okay. Now, I request all of you to do a research, as I told you, please download Companies Act from uh, MCA, Ministry of Corporate Affairs website, and find out how many types of companies are defined. Don't refer to any text. In textbook, you can find out various companies, right? Chartered company, registered company, so many types of companies are there. But you refer to Act and tell me how many types of companies are actually existing according to Companies Act 2010. Okay, just list out. All that you have to do, download this app. Okay, then press Control F, find out company, wherever company name is appearing. See if it is that is defined, find out. Okay, or see the definition part where it is defined. If there is some other types of companies out there, make a list out. You'll find out only limited numbers, limited types of companies are there. So far as companies act is concerned. There might be different types of company under income tax. There might be different types of company other other laws, but Companies Act says only these types of companies are. Are you getting? Will you do a research? Yes, sir. Okay, do a research and let me know the result. How many of them, how many types of companies you have found out? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're asking about one person company. One person company is a type of company which is defined at a company. Okay. Like this, there are many companies that are defined. What is one person company? What is, let us say, a private company? What is public company? What is small company? Like this, some terms are defined. So that you search and find it out. So all these companies are companies under companies law. All these companies are also companies under income tax law because income tax law says company means first of all Indian company. And all of them what you are talking about are Indian companies. Because Indian company has also been defined. Let me see. Let, let me show you what is the meaning of Indian company. This is the definition you are seeing. Now you see, first of all, we'll see what is the meaning of Indian company. It is defined in section 2, clause 26. Now you have a look at this definition. You tell me whether it is an inclusive definition or exhaustive definition. Have a look and let me know. So, inclusive definition. Are you sure? Uh, yes, uh, because it includes. It includes. Please read it carefully once again. It says, means a company formed and registered under Company Act 2030 and includes. So it's both exhaustive and inclusive. It is both. It is both. Okay. 
So therefore, when you are reading a definition of my art, I expect all of you to be more attentive about this type of definition that has been provided in the law. It means a company formed and registered under Company Act 2013. That means once it is a company formed and registered under Company Act 2013, it is 100% Indian company, no doubt about it. And it also includes some other thing that's a different. So our friend was giving an example, OPC, one person company. Is it formed and registered under Companies Act 2013? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. then it is Indian company. Once it is Indian company, it is a company under Indian uh, under Income Tax Act. No doubt about it. Sir, okay. uh, yes. sir, the foreign companies which are residing in India, in our country, so the income tax law is also applied on them. The uh, same structure or they have the other provisions. Okay, your question is that whether income tax law is applicable to foreign company or not. That is why initially we have we are discussing about the scheme of taxes. Income tax law is applicable or tax is legible or who? On every person. Right? Person includes company or not. Whether it is a foreign company or anything, that doesn't matter. Income tax law doesn't say it is applicable to foreign company. Income tax law says every person. It is applicable to every person. Income tax law has defined what is the meaning of person. Now you tell me, what is your opinion? Is it applicable to a foreign company or not? I am asking sir, you this question. Sir, as, sir as per the territory in concern, sir, if the company is willing to set up a firm or a company in our country, so the income tax law should uh, prevail, sir. Yes. So your point is that if a foreign company is a company, if it is a company, it is a person. If it is a person, it may become an assistant. So tax will be like you. All that you have to understand here, whether that particular company you are talking about is a person. Once he is a person, then we will see he is an assistant or not. That's second. First thing is that he is a person. Okay. Now let us see. Once again, let me continue that definition. It will be more clear to you. Indian company have understood one part. Now let me show the other provisions. So a company which is formed and registered under Companies Act 2013 is an Indian company and includes, now you read it, a company formed and registered under any law relating to the companies formally in force in any part of India. So if there is some law relating to the company, which was earlier in force in some part of India, because different laws were there in the state of Jammu and Kashmir and some other regions. And if a company is formed under that law, that will also be regarded as company. Then a corporation which is established under central state and other provincial act, those corporations will also be treated as company under income tax. And already you know institution or association or body which is declared by a CBDT is also a company. Okay. So any company which is formed under the law which was there in the state of Jammu and Kashmir earlier or specific laws which are applicable in the state of, in the Indian territory of Dadra, Nagara, Bili, Goa, Daman, Diu, Pondicherry, and if companies are formed under those law, that will be still treated as a company. Okay, so this, this is the meaning of Indian company. And once that is an Indian company, that is a company. Because company definition includes Indian company plus other things. Right. Here it says body corporate incorporated by or under any law outside India. Now, your question was whether foreign company is a company or Now, looking at this slide, can you tell me whether foreign company is a company? Let us say there is a company which is incorporated in Singapore. 
can we call it as a company under indian income tax law yes sir yes is it clear to you yes sir yes good now here we are trying to we are trying to define we are trying to classify the company under income tax law okay don't get confused with the classification that company law is given. Company law, different types of companies are there, which I told you, you can do a research and let me know. But our income tax law, we can classify primarily as domestic company and a foreign company. What is a domestic company? Indian companies are always domestic. Secondly, Company which has made arrangement for declaring and paying dividend within India out of the income chargeable to tax in India. If the company is having some income which is chargeable to income tax in India and it has made arrangement for declaring and paying dividend in India, then that will be also treated as a domestic. Okay, once you know a company is a domestic company, then fine. And if it is not a domestic company, it's a foreign company. So who is a foreign company? First of all, it has to be a non-Indian company. Secondly, the company must not have made any arrangement for declaring and paying dividend within India out of the incomes chargeable to tax in India. Understood the distinction between domestic company and foreign company? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. So, company part is clear to you. So, under income tax law, we need to classify the company into two categories. Why two categories? Because tax rates are different. We already know the persons are chargeable are rate or rates. Sometimes one type of rate is applicable, sometimes slab rates are applicable, sometimes for a particular category of person different tax rates might be applicable. Tax rates for domestic companies are different. Tax rates for foreign companies are different. Okay. Right. So therefore, we need to understand that whether the company is a domestic company or Okay, friends. Now, next category of person is local authority. Local authority will understand like this, the municipal committee, district board, body of board commissioners, panchayats, cantonment board, all these are the examples of local authority. There is no definition. We have to understand by taking the natural, normal meaning. And these are the examples of local authorities for which hope you have understood. Okay. So other authorities who are legally entrusted by government with control or management of a municipal or local fund can be referred to as local authority. Right? The last category of persons is HAP or artificial judicial person. Seven category of persons. Last category of persons, artificial juridical person. Artificial juridical person means they are persons, but not natural persons. But they can do many things like natural persons. For example, they can acquire property, they can buy property, sell property, hold property. Okay, but you cannot file a legal suit against them. They cannot be sued in court. They are called as artificial judicial person. Can you give me some examples? Uh, so may I? Yeah, please. Uh, sir, deity, the gods, they have the right to hold the property, but they cannot uh, be sued because they don't have any fundamental or constitutional rights. Right, exactly. That is an example. Okay, Lord Jagannath, Lord Tirupati. So these are the examples of artificial judicial person. 
they may own property buy property sell property earn income unless that income is exempted they have to pay tax also okay once they're earning income taxable income they have to pay tax also but they can be sued in court of law they cannot be sued that is called as artificial judicial these kind of persons are called as artificial judicial persons okay they are separate entities in the eyes of law but they may not be directly sued in court of law examples are deities and deed of etc right so you can file a suit against jagannath temple trust but you cannot file a suit against lord jagannath okay directly they cannot be sued they are artificial judicial persons now seven category of persons we had discussed is it clear to you now go back to our earlier scheme that we have studied now try to recap every person person part is over person means now seven category of person individual now tell me with me who are this category of persons individuals then uh, hindu undivided uh, family hindu undivided family the aop and boi the so aop boi okay forms llp forms yes sir company company local authority local authority and artificial uh, very, AJ. Very artificial okay. judicial person aj so these are the seven category persons okay friends now having understood this next thing is that we need to understand what is the meaning of total income right every person whose total income we need to have an idea about total income let me share the screen with you now under income tax law there are five heads of income. we call it as the heads of income. now look at this slide and please read these heads can you read 1 2 3 4 5 please read out help me in reading this salaries income from okay. property right uh, profit and gains of business or profession capital right. gains income from other sources these are called so five heads of income that means whatever income you are income tax income tax law classifies them into under, under four headings four heads of income and under each head there might be multiple sources okay sources are different heads are different. for example at the salary you might be receiving salary from two employers who knows so my you are working in the morning so you are working in the evening possible right you might be having two businesses so you are under the head profit and gains of business or profession you might be having multiple businesses so there are sources so there might be multiple sources of income but heads coming to heads of income there are only how many heads five heads of income. okay so first head is salaries so we will be learning in detail what is salary income okay salaries means the money which is received from an employer there has to be an employer employee relationship when we will be learning salary chapter this thing will be more clear to you. that is salary income all of us know. pension is also salary because that is received from a former employer either from present employer or from former employer if you are receiving some money or something uh, maybe some non monetary benefits that is also self okay then the next head is that income from house property if someone is having some house property the annual value of that house property, that concept will be learning the annual value of that house property will be charged to income tax it doesn't matter whether that person is earning some rent out of that property or not. okay it doesn't matter. what is taxable is the annual okay that is the second and the third head is 
profit and gains of business affairs. That deals with business income or professional income. Okay. And the fourth head is capital gains. If a capital asset is transformed, so when we are learning that chapter, we'll be seeing, we'll try to understand at that point of time, what is a capital asset? Okay. It can be a long-term capital asset, it can be a short-term capital asset. We'll be learning all this. And we'll be also understanding what is the meaning of transfer. If the capital asset is transferred, then there is a possibility. There might be gain and there might be loss. Right? If there is a capital gain, that gain is chargeable to death. There are some exemptions, deductions, all these things are there and appropriate time will be done. Understood? Okay, how many heads I told you? Salaries, then income from house property, from house property. then profit and gains of house business or profession, then capital gains, and the last head is income from other sources. So this is in fact a residual head. If there is some income which cannot be classified under this, under the previous four categories, that can be grouped under this head. Right. For example, let us say you are having interest income from your saving bank account. Is it your salary? Is it your income from house property? Is it your business income? Is it your capital gain? Then where you are going to group, group it? Under which head? Income from other sources. Good. Similarly, let us say you are doing a part-time tuition. If it is your business or profession, that's a different thing. If it is not, then it has to be grouped under the heading income from other sources. Okay. So if you recall the scheme which I told you at the initial, at the beginning, I had told you that every person whose total income okay, of the previous year exceeds exceeding the maximum amount which is not chargeable to tax can be called as an assessee. So we are now interested to know what is the meaning of total Right? How many sources I told you? How many heads I told you? Of course, sources might be many, but heads are five. 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 Heads are five. Okay, there might be multiple sources of income. Under each head, there might be multiple sources. Right? right. If I aggregate the income and all these heads, there are different ways or you can say different uh, methods different are prescribed to compute income under each head. The way you'll be computing income under the head salary are not same for the head income from house property. Under different heads in, by applying different way, different concept procedures, you'll be computing your income. Right. And if you aggregate all this aggregate the income which are generated for all these five bits. What you are going to get? What will you get? So I told you five bits. Let me show you it now. Are you able to see it? Yes, sir. Okay. So these are the five pairs. There will be some income from salaries. Okay. We will be learning how to calculate the total received from salary. What are the deductions? Finally, what is the salary income? Similarly, income from house property. What is the income? What are the deductions? And finally, how much will be taxable here? 
Similarly, PGBP capital gains income from other sources. Finally, if you total, we'll get a figure. We'll be calling it just total. We cannot call it as the total income. Total income is different. Okay. And after that, you have to apply two more things. One is setup of carry forward net losses. And other one is that uh, you're clubbing up income. These two concepts, first of all, today I will explain it. Setup of carry forward net losses concept means if you have incurred some losses in any previous years, right? And you have filed your income tax return in time, then subject to certain conditions, you are eligible to carry forward that loss. Meaning, let us say last year your business loss was 5 lakh rupees and you have filed your income tax loss return in time. It has been assessed. Loss is 5 lakh rupees. Current, this previous year, your income is 25 lakh rupees. Okay, then what will happen in this 25 lakh rupees? This 5 lakh rupees loss of earlier year, which was carried forward, now can be set up. So, current year, you'll be paying tax on 25 lakh minus 5 lakh. Then on how much? 20 lakh. 20 lakh. Are you getting it? This concept is called as setup of carry forwarded losses. But to carry forward loss, you have to comply with certain conditions. This setup is allowed subject to certain conditions. So you'll be learning in appropriate time. Okay. But the most important condition is that the return should have been filed in time before due date if loss has been incurred, one is supposed to file the return in time. Okay, if it is a belated return, unless it is specifically allowed in certain situation, loss cannot be set up. Right? So once we know the total figure, then one adjustment we have to make, if there is some carry forward losses which needs to be set up, then that has to be deducted. Okay, it's set up for carry forwarded losses. That will be deducted. Right, now one more adjustment. What is that? That is called as the clubbing process. Let us understand this concept also. What is clubbing process? Clubbing provision means in certain situation what happens? Some other person's income gets clubbed with the assistance income. Okay. Other persons means in certain situations, maybe spouse income may be clubbed, maybe minor child's income may be clubbed, maybe some other person's income will be clubbed. Mm -hmm. There is a separate chapter regarding this clubbing provisions. We will be learning at appropriate time. Okay, again, these are subject to certain conditions and only in certain specific situations, not in all situations, not that every time a minor child's income will be clubbed with the income, no. But in certain situations, it will be clubbed. Okay, but not that in always spouse income will be clubbed with the income of the assassin, no. Not in every situation, only in some specific situations it will be clubbed. So, if clubbing provisions applies, certain other income also needs to be added here. Okay, so I told you that I will be computing in income under each this each of these heads. Then I will be making two adjustments. What are they? Setup of carry forwarded losses. Number one. Number two. What? Clubbing, Club, clubbing provisions. I'll be applying. After applying that thing, I'll be getting a figure. Okay, can you guess what you'll be calling that figure? Total income. No, total income. no, that is the mistake gross we do. Income. That's why I'm saying it is still not total income. Still, gross still income. not total income. It is called a GTI. Right. Okay, what is this? GTI means gross, gross total, total income. Gross total income. 
But at the beginning, what I told you, every person who's sir, residence book and uh, like. Yeah, I, I told you in the first sentence I will remember every person whose total income total income exceeds. So we are interested to know what is total income, but so far we do not know what is total income. Now we have arrived at only what is gross total income. Right. From that gross total income, certain deductions. Deduction which chapter I had shown you? Anybody who has remembered? When I was showing it, the so app. six eh? Chapter, chapter six, six. Eight. very good, fantastic. So from there, from this GTI, you can make chapter six a deduction. This is GTI. Now, chapter six a deduction. The figure I will be getting that is my total. Okay. Now you look at here. These are the five heads. Okay. Then aggregate of all above after applying clubbing provision and set of carry of carry forward losses. You'll be getting gross total income. Okay. From gross total income, less chapter six a deduction. Which are there in section 80 C to 80 U, you'll be getting total income. That in total income will be rounded off of what? Up to nearest to piece 10, and we'll be computing tax on that. Well, friends, the concept of total income, once again, I'll be explaining in our next session. So don't worry about this. So today I have given you an introduction to the basics of income tax law. We have seen how to visit to the income tax department site and how to refer to act. Okay, some other things are also there. We'll be learning gradually. And also we have understood what is the meaning of person and what is the meaning of total income, right? All other points we'll be learning slowly and slowly by and by. Thank you very much. We'll catch up again in our next session. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.